was one of those afternoons. The crossword puzzle annoyed me. I didn't feel like working on the boat and the fog was getting ready. I could feel it coming in my back. The seagull screaming didn't tell me anything. I had no premonition. I had no picture in my mind of Andre Tanio fighting for a life in the water. Not then, and not hours later when it actually happened. was a Coast Guard Admiral. Her boat must have broken up on the rocks. They're listing your wife as lost at sea, presumably drowned. No, they're, they're wrong. That is from your boat, isn't it? The lucky lady. They think your wife, uh, her body, will wash up in a day or so. The way the currents move, can't be exactly sure. They simply don't understand. Magnificent swimmer. When we were stationed in the Mediterranean, she swam four or five miles a day. I'm sorry, Admiral. There's no other explanation. There has to be another explanation. When the boat hit the rocks, maybe Andrea was thrown violently against something. Possibly even knocked out. The shock of the cold water revived her. She, she swam away from the wreck. But she got her bearings, and then, then she hit the shore. She could be wandering around now, dazed, even injured. I want you to find her. I'm afraid this won't be a police matter for another 48 hours. Unless, of course, you believe there may have been foul play. I have no reason to believe that. And I'm sorry, Admiral, there's nothing more we can do for you at this time. lawyer called me, the first thing I did was check with the Coast Guard. A retired military man with a missing wife wasn't exactly news. Well, anyone with a missing wife isn't exactly news. But I tried to keep an open mind. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I have a lot of memories. Oh, the world was simple then. There was good, there was evil. I have some photographs of my wife. How long were you married? Andrea and I were married 18 years ago. 
It's been a perfect 18 years. Perfect? She's kind, she's uh, supportive, and she's concerned, really concerned, about me. I was told your wife's an experienced sailor. Yes, extremely. And that there were no small craft warnings out, and visibility was unlimited until late afternoon. Well, that makes for a very unusual accident. Well, no one knows the exact time it happened. She could have run into a pocket of fog. And there's always the possibility of the unusual when you're alone in a boat. Well, we don't know that. I mean, there might have been somebody with her. No. She was alone. Was your wife an unhappy woman? What are you getting at? Nothing. I mean, was she upset recently? Was she depressed? Was she... Despondent? Despondent. If you knew my wife, the possibility of her taking her own life would not even occur to you. Well, I was wondering if she thought as highly of your marriage as you did. What are you, Mr. Orwell? A marriage counselor? I told my attorney to find a private investigator. Yeah, well, you see, I handled a missing wife case uh, about a year ago from your attorney. It turns out she wasn't missing at all. She was hiding. She was just waiting for some sign of affection from her husband. When the private investigator came along, that was me. That's all she wanted. That was a symbol for her husband's caring. I didn't like that. Don't like to be used. I don't spend my money on symbols, Mr. Orwell. My wife is missing. She's not just another picture. Something to pin old memories to. And you understand? She's the only real thing in my life. Without her, I... Can you understand? Yes, sir. But I can't ignore reality. The Coast Guard has a pretty exact picture of what must have happened. Now, when you're dealing with people or the sea, Mr. Orwell, nothing is ever exact. There are a thousand odd reasons for someone to be missing, and only one of them is dead. According to the Admiral, Andrea Tannehill spent most of her afternoons at the club, playing bridge, gossiping, maybe drinking a little. Well, just being alive gets lonely sometimes. For some people, it starts hurting at three in the morning. And for some, it's three in the afternoon. Hi. Huh. Uh, Andre Tannehill. I read about it in the paper. No? White wine on the rocks, splash of soda. Regular customer. You a policeman? No, I used to be. I'm self-employed. Well, then, uh, I got work to do. Hey. She ever leave with a man? See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Catchy. You want to know about her personal life, why don't you ask Mrs. Lucas? They were friends. Play a lot of bridge together? Yeah, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Mrs. Lucas, I'm a private investigator. How private? Oh, Andrea gone off for a few days, long enough to drive her husband crazy. It's an old game. I always play it. Did she play too? Can you get paid by the day? Yeah. The day's almost over. It is? Somewhere in the world. You're right. seen each other before. Any port in a storm. Keep 
Come back, okay? Don't know yet, Harry. About 100 yards offshore, running in with the tide. One of the lifeguard towers spotted her. I think you better have the Admiral come down to the morgue. They want you down at the morgue. They could be wrong. Come on inside, quick. Hit it. No, not with your shoulder, with your foot. Stop by your house. Your next door neighbor said I might find you here. I, uh, I have your check. Sit down. Here. What do you hear from Andrea? <sighs> she asked me to thank you. Think you two will get back together? It's up to her. Well, it must be lonely on Mount Olympus. If you had ever been deeply in love with a woman, you wouldn't have to speculate. I'm not speculating. The tumult and the shouting dies, the captains and the kings depart. Still stands thine ancient sacrifice and humble and a contrite heart. Good luck, Admiral. 